Now let's make a epoxide from a halo hydron. So recall that a halo hydron is something that where you have a halogen on one carbon and on the adjacent carbon you have a alcohol. And when you take those uh, that halo hydron, so here's our halo hydron, and you treat that with some sodium hydroxide, you are going to form an epoxide. So let's count our carbons here. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. And what's going to happen is it's going to generate that epoxide right there. Can you see what's happening mechanistically? I highly encourage you to pause the video and just try to do this mechanism by yourself. You see what's happening? So let's go through it. So we have, well, that's actually not the way to do it, right? Because that hydroxide looks like this. Needs to be charged. So that's a strong base. So that's going to come and grab that proton right there. And what have we done? We've done a proton transfer reaction. Pretty straightforward, right? So that's going to generate what? An alkoxide. Like so. And we also generated some water. Now, do you see what's going to happen here? This is electron rich, that carbon is electron poor, and we have a good leaving group. So we are going to do a SN2 mechanism. Now this mechanism is an intramolecular SN2. And an intramolecular mechanism is one where you have the electrophile and the nucleophile all on the same carbon or same molecule. And so that, uh, this lone pair right there can come down and attack that electrophilic carbon and kick off the leaving group in that manner. And there we have our product. And yes, we still have the chloride floating around. But that is really of no interest to us right now. So that is a, once again, proton transfer SN2. We've seen this over and over and over again. Just the steps are just, I, th I think it's cool because all the reactions that we're uh, looking at is just going to use those 10 elementary steps that I taught you.